Well, all good marriages have a little flexibility in them, and so that means every month or two I get a chance to have an astronomer's night out away from the wife. And just a couple nights ago, me and a bunch of other Chad stargazers went to an astronomy club, and we were sitting there having a couple beers, and we saw this galaxy. And let me tell you, folks, this was a knockout. And I said, that is the finest looking thing I have seen in a long time. Baby, you are gorgeous. And the galaxy said, well, you'll just never guess how old I am. And then it told me, and I said, you look half that age, darling. You look absolutely half that age. 26 is the new 13, ladies and gentlemen. And here's what all of this nonsense is all about. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Ott. And there has been a discovery made by the James Webb Telescope that is, in my opinion, knee-jerk reaction to it, a very big deal. Here's the story. Right now, we think that the, ga that the universe, not galaxies, the entire universe is about 13 billion years old, give or take a billion or two here or there. What one of uh, these re astronomy researchers uh, has discovered is that maybe this is not the case at all. When you look really, really far back, you begin to see like these little acoustic waves, and it's convinced him that light may be playing some very strange tricks with us at the very border of the observable universe. And the short form of this is, is that there is now a possibility that the universe is not 13 billion years old, it's approximately 26 billion years old. In other words, it's twice as old as we thought it was, and here's why I believe this to be true. We look out into the universe and we see the stars and the galaxies and the things that are visible to us and we can count that and we can see lanes of gas and dust and we can estimate how much the mass of all of those things are. We also know how fast we think the universe is expanding based on the redshift. This is what Hubble discovered and this is what led to the expanding Big Bang Theory. Well, if it turns out that the galaxy is twice as old as, sorry, that the universe is twice as old as we think it is, then we no longer have to explain the discrepancies between what we see and what we think based on our theories, because the universe is expanding too rapidly for what we can see. So astronomers have had to come up with things like dark matter, dark energy, things that always sounded like band-aids to me. They sounded from the very time I first heard them. These sound like theoretical band-aids that you're putting on a theory that is not complete or wrong in order to match your theory to the data. If it turns out this fellow is right, we don't need these things anymore. Uh, Steve, it is possible, it doesn't always happen, but it's possible that a new instrument, a new, a new tool available to science allows you to access data that gives you a chance to completely rewrite the, the existing theories of what's happened. And, and a good example of this is, is, um, is the Hubble telescope, the space telescope, actual Hubble himself used a telescope to determine that there was in fact a red shift. This gave us the idea of an expanding universe. It would cause a great many problems to say the least for all of astronomy to realize that our age of the, of the universe is off by 100%, that it's twice as old as we thought it was, but not having a dog in this fight, having spent my entire career researching dark energy or dark matter, anything that eliminates the Band-Aids has the ring of truth to me. That, and that is why as soon as I saw that headline on Monday, I went, finally. And before I even looked at any of the math or anything, which is, you know, way over my head, it's why I didn't become an engineer or a scientist is because of the math. And that's that's not where my skill set is. Although it's really quite trivial, Steve, really. But but go ahead. Continue. With the I'm point. sure. Although uh, before I get to that, I just want to mention that, you know, we're, we're actually as we record this episode, we, we haven't. Put it up on Rumble or YouTube or at BillWhittle.com yet. It's not available to the public. We are making it right now. And already, a Media Matters intern is figuring out how to take your 26 is the new 13 line out of context. And make me into a pedophile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, go for it. Look, look, I'm talking about billions of years. If you're 13 billion years old, you are at the age of consent as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> there, I've said yeah. it. All right. Context, my ass. Anyway, um, yeah, so the way I was taught you science, if we can, if we can uh, verb that word, is that um, when your evidence doesn't fit the theory, you gotta you gotta change your theory, and and dark matter and dark energy were to me cop outs. It's like we are so set on this theory that we're just gonna invent stuff you can't see or or de energy you can't detect. To make what we are seeing fit fit the theory, and that's that's not how science works. Even when I was a, a teenager, when I first started reading about this stuff, it just it felt wrong to me. Um, and 
the current generation, the people who are vested, Bill, as you said, in in these ideas of, of dark dark matter and dark energy, they're not gonna they're not gonna go quietly. I don't think we we, we always see this whenever the the paradigm is shattered. Um, Einstein was basically ridiculed until the previous generation of ridiculers either retired or died. Um, and the same thing happened when quantum physics became a thing. And by the way, that's where my understanding uh, tops out. Uh, that's a, that's actually above where my understanding. I could kind of figure out how relativity works. You know, Einstein was great with his thought experiments of putting the, the the complicated math into human terms that a layman like me could understand. You get into the quantum stuff, forget it. This is God playing dice with the universe, and he's got a really sick sense of humor. And that's 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 all I really get about quantum mechanics. Um, I'm, I'm kidding about the sixth sense of humor, except maybe not really. Um, anyway, Bill, like you, I, I, I jumped at this news. It, it, it has the ring of truth because it doesn't have the ring of falseness to it. It doesn't say, hey, there's stuff out there we can't see, but it's got to be there because the theory says it has to be there. What it says is we have new evidence that suggests that the universe is twice as old as we thought it was, and that was the missing thing, and we can see evidence of that. That's how the science is supposed to work. Well, yes. Now, to be fair to the entire existing astronomical community, of which I am only an amateur member and not in high standing as far as the (laughs) research papers are concerned, the reason, Scott, that that we thought the universe was 13-some billion years old is a very good yeah. one. We know how light behaves. We know we we know what red shifts are. We can measure these things with a very high degree of precision. What the James Webb telescope is apparently revealing, if I understand this correctly, is that light behaved differently at the beginning of the universe and that and that this this crinkling effect at the limit of what we could observe is is anomalous to what we're seeing light doing now. So it's not like, hey, we just took a random guess and now everybody has to make a Band-Aid to make this guess. This 13 and a half billion year old estimation was was provable by every single experiment that we could possibly do. What this appears to be showing us, though, is that as Newtonian physics is a subset of Einsteinian physics, it may be that the way light behaves in our section of the universe at this time in the universe is not necessarily the way that it behaved in the years and, and billions of years immediately after the Big Bang. So it's not that it's not that our science was wrong. It's just that we, we use things like dark energy and dark matter to explain two irreconcilable issues. We know what light is supposed to do. We know what matter is supposed to do. We can test that. And we can also measure how fast the universe is expanding. We could test that. And these two things don't match up. So we have to have some kind of an explanation for this. But no one I'd ever heard of it said, well, maybe our view of time is wrong. Yeah, I, I love this approach for a couple of reasons. And, and you know, we're in the early stages of this. This He's going to, of course, uh, receive huge amounts of criticism and challenge and stuff uh-huh. like that. So he's got to weather that. Uh, the guy's last name is Gupta. And uh, in on Earth.com, in an article there, it said that Gupta confident, confidently concludes that, quote, there are several papers that question the existence of dark matter, but mine is the first one, to my knowledge, that eliminates its cosmological existence while being consistent with key cosmological observations that we have had time to confirm. Basically saying that it's the first time somebody's been able to say, look, we're going to eliminate this whole factor. We don't and, need it. And yet everything we know still holds up. I, this is That's a right. great way to, it's actually a great way to to analyze a lot of things in life, to ask yourself the question, what would have to be true if we were wrong about this in order to make our observations of reality still hold. And if you start looking at your life and say, you, you, there are so many preconceptions we live with all day long, and a lot of them have been reinforced by people in positions of authority like this. You know, we've been told by very smart people for many years, this is how old the universe is. And there's this dark matter or dark energy. It makes up something like 26% of the universe. And we, we, can't really prove its existence, but it has to be there because <laughs> if it's not there, then the earth can't be, the, or the universe can't be this old. So 
uh, I love the the fundamental question going into it that says, okay, well, let's start taking apart our theory. And, and for each piece of it, say, okay, now we're going to remove this element of it. So if we take this away, what would have to be true in order to make the rest of the house of cards remain standing? Um, and if we take this away and everything collapses and there's no way to put it back together again, well, then maybe we got to find this, whatever this is, in this case, dark matter or dark energy. Um, I like challenging the hypothesis. I like being willing to come up with an unorthodox conclusion. I like the, the instigating of dialogue. And I think ultimately what Gupta has done here is triggered a discussion that is going to result in more learning, more study, uh, increased debate and dialogue, um, maybe a willingness to, uh, to kill some sacred cows and to be able to explore some questions that may have just kind of fallen into disuse because everybody accepted the general theory. Well, science has become awfully politicized lately and, uh, Politicizing science does not elevate politics, it just simply lowers science. But what I don't want to be the result of this little uh, episode is, is that it will increase people's distrust of science and the scientific process. The 13 and a half billion year old age of the, of the universe is our, was our best estimate based on all the evidence that we had. And we had to create these things in order to explain what we're seeing, because that's what science is. We take a look at nature, we try to come up with a theory that describes what we're seeing, and we had a significant, huge number of data points saying that this was in fact the case. This new instrument has unveiled a new data set that challenges that existing proposition. Now, if it turns out that this is true, then this is exactly how science is supposed to work. We have our best theory about something, and then we get some new data, which explains the holes, maybe completely, entirely rewrites the entire theory, and we look at things in a different way, and we're closer to the truth. That's what we're after. We're after the actual truth, which I, I believe actually does exist. This is still a news headline. This could be as accurate as cold fusion, but I don't think so. My gut instinct, which is really not my, less of my brain, it's really more of my brain. When I'm using my gut instinct, I'm accessing all of my astronomical experience at once and coming to a snap decision predicated on a lifetime of being interested in astronomy. And when I saw this headline and said that this negates the need for dark matter and dark energy completely, my gut told me I think this is true. And the reason I think this is true is based on evidence. You could have an equation that explains the relationship between matter and energy, and that equation could take up 60 blackboards worth of mathematical figuring. That's a, that's a conceptual possibility that the relationship between matter and energy is that complex. But when you find out that the relationship between matter and energy is energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, one, two, three, four, five characters, then you know it's got to be true. The second Einstein got E equals MC squared, he must have instantly known it was true because it's elegant. The universe is elegant. Maxwell's equations about, about energy are elegant. They're simple. Any idiot can make things complicated. It takes true genius to make something simple. And this has the ring of simplicity to me. And that's why I'm telling you, I think, I really do think, that 26 is the new 13. I would be disappointed if this were not the case, but science will do its thing. And the nice thing about astronomy and the nice thing about being an amateur astronomer since I was 14 is, of all of the sciences that are being p politicized, astronomy, pure astronomy, as opposed to climate astronomy and all the rest of it, pure astronomy is still pretty much untouched. We still haven't figured out a way to determine whether or not Joe Biden or, or, or Donald Trump is a men or man based on the expansion of the universe. But don't worry, scientists are working on that problem too. For Steve Green and Scott Ott, I'm Bill Whittle. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time right here on Right Angle.